<clears throat> Thank you, Alfonso. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, and I would like to thank the many organizers for giving me this opportunity. My name is Jose Manuel Estarán, PhD researcher at the Technical University of Denmark. And today I'm giving an overview of the work of DTU Phonolic in advanced modulation format uh, together with coding, what we believe one of the most powerful combinations to and harmonic combinations to increase the spectral efficiency of our data links. Though it's very well known, let me please very quickly state the real motivation of all this work, and it's the huge global internet traffic demand, mainly driven by, by video transmission, which is expected to experience more than threefold increase during the next four years. All this boils down to a very simple conclusion is that the efficient use of the bilateral resources is, is a necessity. And amongst the tools that we engineers have for approaching this, we count advanced modulation format, wavelength division multiplexing, and space division multiplexing. And we can presumably say that advanced modulation format is one of the, has been so far one of the easiest ways to increase this spectral efficiency. And it's precisely because of that that we have exploited this option so fast that we have reached some complicated and fundamental challenges that have slowed down all this capacity increase process. And we in DTU observe that this as a very good opportunity. And what I'm presenting today is the set of uh, two challenges that we consider uh, the most relevant and how we combine advanced modulation format together with coding to, to approach them. The first of the problem, uh, constellation power distribution. How the points in our constellation are located and what, the, what is the probability of occurrence of each of these points. Um, the goal here is to understand and to see the limitations imposed by regular grid or uniform dis uniformly sorry, distributed constellations like QAM on the achievable capacity, learn from these limitations and apply the corresponding modifications on this distribution to approach them and, and overcome them. But in order to see what is the real problem here, I prepared this simple link for you. There's a transmitter, there's a receiver, and we have an optical fiber. And we're going to transmit through it uh, one of these regular grid, uniformly perfect QAM distributions, n times m to make it general. And we analyze the spectral efficiency, virtual signal to noise ratio. This is a qualitative analysis, so don't, don't, don't really pay much attention to the numbers. The conditions is in uniform distributions and a power constraint constellation. We don't have infinite amount of power at our disposal. We also plot there the signal limit as a reference and in blue our, our outcome. The first thing we observe if we analyze the red words is a signal to noise ratio gap. It's a gap between, for the same spectral efficiency, between what we obtain and signal limit. This signal to noise ratio gap, also called constellation gain, or sorry, shaping gain, is a quantization, let's say, of the inefficiency of this particular constellation under analysis and its characteristic of every modulation format. Another thing that we observe as we increase the signal power is that nonlinearities start making an impact on our quality and we have this rollover that it's impeding to reach more spectral efficiency. So now the question is, can we change this distribution such that we can get closer to signal limit and also perhaps delay the effect of nonlinearities? So we started studying that. And the first thing we did was implementing the famous and some somehow known Black Hood Arimoto algorithm for the calculation of the uh, PDF, optimum PDF, to achieve capacity in a given memoryless channel. And we extend it to uh, account for constrained power, uh, constrained power, discrete two dimensional constellations. The first point that we discussed in the previous slide was the signal to noise ratio gap, which is related to the linear regime of the optical, the linear operation in optical fibers that can be very well modeled as an additive white Gaussian noise. What you are observing on the left hand side is the optimum distribution, the capacity achieving probability density function for one particular set of conditions in the power, but for an additive white Gaussian noise. We take it take this information, which is by itself very relevant, and we decided to make a modulation format out of it. We implemented a novel capacity achieving modulation format, SCMPSM, that was presented in ECOG 2013, and we successfully transmitted over 200, more than 200 kilometers single mode fiber. This was the first experimental demonstration of this particular modulation format ever, not even in optical fiber. 
for more information, I have a poster and, and we can discuss about this. We were so motivated by these results that we wonder, okay, let's apply this to other channels of interest, like the Gaussian distributed phase noise and self phase modulation together with IT white Gaussian noise. And so these are the outcomes. Of course, we took into as an assumption that uh, we were using a memoryless channel, but these are already very good results that are open enough for the consideration of using saping, raw saping for the nonlinear region without using tricks, or not tricks, but resources like OFDM, uh, twin waves, or backpropagation that kind of make our channel Gaussian-ish and memoryless. But how do we obtain this? How, how do we transform distributions to constellations? There are two ways, of course. One is geometric, as I saw in the previous uh, starist constellation, is by accumulated points around certain power areas that doing this, obviously, becomes more likely to occur. And another way is probabilistic saping. We literally transform the probability of occurrence of our symbols through coding. Among the tens of uh, methods to achieve this through coding, we chose the Raphael scheme, which is uh, simple, easy to understand, and somehow general and easy to, escalable, to, to scale. Sorry. It consists of a systematic turbo encoder, which is used for uh, iteratively resolve the ambiguities that we are inducing at the receiver. And also we have a serial to parallel converter with so many lines as bits per symbol, a puncture, an interleaver, and the key of saping, which is mapper. I made this simple example for you in which we have eight symbols, like an eight PAM, and each of the symbols is assigned five bits instead of three, as we would expect. But these two spare bits that we have allow, allow us to induce um, ambiguities and, there, and thereby shape our constellations according to what the Blahu Tarimoto algorithm tells us. This way we create dyadic probability mass functions through many to one mapping. Our colleague in the coding group, Metody Plamenov Jankov, has given us this, this uh, results that, he, that are already published in which we effectively showed that in the case of 1024 QEM dyadic SAPE, uh, SAPE constellation, we basically are over the sun limit here compared to the pink one, which is the uniform capacity. This is for the linear region. Well, so far, recapping, we have seen one problem, one proposed solution, and two methods, two possible methods to realize this. But now we close this section and we'll go on to the other problem that we consider. The trade-off between spectral efficiency, sensitivity, and complexity. And for all those that we may not be very familiar with it, I will explain it very simply with this panel that I made. We have some knobs on the bottom with which we control signal power, modulation level, and Nyquist filter, or roll of factor. Then we also have this spectral efficiency versus signal to noise ratio plot that we are going to use to illustrate the working point and what are, what are the combinations are, are not possible to, to achieve. And on the left hand side, we have some bars that will qualitatively measure the, the sensitivity, the spectral efficiency, and the complexity of the system. If we realize, we start here with, for instance, a dual polarization BPSK, two bits per second per head, and let's say we want to increase the capacity we just increase the modulation level and thereby we increase the complexity uh, and also the spectral efficiency. But we move our working point to the unreliable transmission area. We cannot transmit five bits per second per hertz with five dBs signal to noise ratio. We need to increase the power. We pump the, the signal up and we go back to the reliable trans trans uh, transmission area or start turns green. We repeat and this time the, co the limitations in the bandwidth uh, preventing us from reaching exactly what we need in this case. Thereby, we feel forced to apply some Nyquist filtering that will increase the spectral efficiency, the complexity, and the sensitivity to untracked effects like jitter, and so on and so forth. We know this limitation or this trade off is, is, is somehow unavoidable so far. Well, we thought that we perhaps could relieve it, could alleviate this, uh, this compromise, or at least give the user with the flexibility to play with it. So we decided to give uh, kind of a solution or an alternative to this, and we started from the needs. 
We wanted something that could transmit in a single carrier more than 200 gigabits per second. That would be great. We wanted, we wanted also something flexible in the same sense and robust in the same sense that, that uh, FlexiGrid uh, is in WDM. We also wanted something easily scal scalable, upgradable, without hardly any impact on the, on the hardware. We wanted also something adaptive in terms of rate, bit rate, granularity, and also power equalization, something comparable in complexity to other solutions and our our sensitivity, and moderate peak to average power ratio and reduce chromatic dispersion impact per transmittable unit, in this case, the band. After some, some efforts, we came up with one solution that was born in, in DTU and that we call Multicap. Multicap that was presented by Miguel Iglesias Olmedo in a post deadline paper OFC 2013. Another question is, can we squeeze this idea a little bit more? Can we get out something out of it? something else, and we decided to, as I indicated, make it coherent. This coherent multi-cap, we seized upon the great dimensionality of this, uh, this uh, coherent multi-cap to transmit more than 300 gigabits per second, namely 336 gigabits per second, one single carrier, in 25 gigahertz electronics, and successfully transmit this over more than 400 kilometers of single mode fiber. This, what you are seeing here, are some experimental results that we'll be presenting, I will be presenting in OFC 2014. This multi-cap idea on and all has given us to DTU one post deadline paper, three regular papers, OFC 2014, one ongoing pattern process and consideration for standards. Of course, uh, needless to say that we are very, very proud of this and we believe in its potential, but that doesn't mean we can make questions like, can sensitivity be improved? Because we know we are comparable in sensitivity to other options. And in this case, coding guys come to help and they decided to make a brand new four-wire correcting code for this. They design a product code, FEC, 511 times 511, whose component codes, that is columns and rows, were coded with BCH and in which the information was iteratively received through hard decisions. First rows and then columns or the other way around, that makes one iteration. One iteration. The simulations, these are simulated results. Here we have prefec before applying the four error correcting code and then postfec uh, beta rate. What we observe now, already on this uh, slide, is one of the benefits is the low number of iterations necessary to achieve error free. But it doesn't stop there. We got one of the largest net coding gains, 10.4 dBs. One of the highest prefect beta rate with 1.14 to the minus 2 that we were able to bring down to 10 to the minus 43, like a lot below the new error floor standard, which is uh, considered to to move from 10 to the minus 15 to 10 to the minus 17. Of course, as, as uh, we usually do, uh, we wanted to validate it experimentally, and we set a channel, DP16QAM, at 88 gigabits per second, and we surrounded it with six channels, a QPSK, with a 25 gigahertz grid. We transmitted over 741 kilometers of single mode fiber, and we recovered the constellations to find out that with 8.4 dBMs in total, we were able to achieve error-free for more than 150 million bits processed, starting from 1.1, 10 to the minus 3, in less than six iterations. We are also working in some improvements in combination with other things, like uh, CAP and some other modulation formats. But we really believe in the potential of this, uh, this uh, four-wire correcting code, and with this, just wanted to, to give you some alternatives to keep on pushing, pushing the limits as, as we are doing. And with this, I would like to, to summarize my talks. We gave a necessity. We need to cope with the, the, with the demand. And we propose to increase optical channel, uh, channel rates. We arise some problems out of it with power, that were power inefficiency of the constellations, the modulation formats that have been used so far trade-off between sensitivity, spectral efficiency, and complexity, 
and not without uh, effort, we came with some alternatives for you that consist of constantly saving and some probabilistic saving and also geometric saving. And concerning the trade-off, we propose multi-cap in combined with strong, novel, and, and promising uh, forward correcting codes. And last but not least, I would like to, to thank the technical contributors and, and the foundations for, for the, all this work. Thank you very much. So we have time for one or two questions for the audience. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, could you go back to slide number five? Yeah. Slide number five. One second. This one? Yes. So, so I guess my, my question on, uh, on, on slide number five is when you show the... Um, this one is, There's different slide fives. Yes, this part. Yeah. When you show the Gaussian distributed phase noise, that is the additive white Gaussian noise after the self-phase self modulation happens? No, no, it's a separate thing. Okay, so I, I guess the question is how does... Um, how does this um, cell phase modulation um, induced uh, noise compare with the kind of noise you would just have from um, your phase, phase noise being converted into uh, intensity noise? Or, or how does your cell phase modulation compare to what a normal um, you know, phase, phase noise to amplitude noise uh, okay. would be? Okay, uh, I, I, I think I understand the question. You mean, how, how, what is the difference between let's say the Gaussian distributed phase noise, what we would get there, and the structure that we would get with cell phase modulation combined with additive white Gaussian noise. Right. Right? Okay. Or wait, I mean, is, is the cell phase modulation always going to be worse, or is that just worse? No, no, oh, no okay, okay, no, sorry, sorry, I got it now. Yeah. Uh, the purpose of this was just, um, because it's, it's the beginning of uh, this, this exercise that we are doing, we just wanted to make sure that in different memoryless channels in different conditions, because uh, we, all, we actually got an algorithm or a solution for those that were actually sensitive with, to the different problems. And in this case, we decided to try, but we could have tried with anything else. It's just, uh, no, it's not representative of anything. It's just for you to see the potential of this, this tool or this algorithm that we have implemented. But um, there's no reason why these two things, these two probability mass functions, sorry, so we put together. So it might be just as applicable to say a, a linear effect like just um, phase noise, linear phase noise to amplitude noise. Um, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then just the second question is: You've shown a lot of experimental, a lot of experimental results. Um, can you just give us some insight into what kind of uh, sources you use? What kind of lasers or external modulators, direct mod? What? Yeah. Well, in the, um, for instance, in the in the cap. Um, uh, Experiment. We use some dual, also dual polarization IQ modulator, and we're using just uh, hundred. I think it was hundred kilohertz line with EZLs for that, and uh, standard single mode fiber lamp amplifi amplification EDFAs. We were considering to use Raman, but at the end, uh, we decided to use this uh, lamp amplifica amplification and and uh, twenty five gigahertz uh, coherent receiver DP QPSK. Well, well Fuj Fujitsu DP QPSK. A coherent, uh, coherent receiver, and and um, uh, I think it was 32 gigahertz DSO. We sampled the signal, and we performed post processing. And uh, uh, we can we can discuss about the details uh, offline, and and I will be glad to give you some some valuable data. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>